today we should secure our spot in the National League North for next season. We just need one more win. Hello and welcome to part 23 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have... Well, we're definitely going to play Gainsborough and Nantwich. We will probably just keep playing until we win the league, though. So it could end up being a long one if we have pathetic form. Um, we're going to do the FA Trophy final as a separate episode. So we might even... if Imagine if we lose four in a row in a league, then take a break to do the FA Trophy. So actually, we're not going to keep going indefinitely. We'll do between two and four games... If we haven't won the league, tomorrow we'll do the FA Trophy final and the final game of the season and then potentially playoffs afterwards if we completely bottle everything. But it, we're not looking like bottling. It's been a long time since we lost a game. We're on another winning streak. This is what the league table looks like at the moment. 37 games gone. We're on 87 points, 14 points clear of Whitby Town. Scarborough, who are in joint second place, we played them recently in the league, thumped them 4 0 away from home. We're a good side. We should be going up in the first of the games against Gainsborough. And fingers crossed, that's exactly what's going to happen. You could tell me who the team are at this point, because it's always going to be the same 11 for the rest of the season, as long as they're fit. And they have been all season, which has been a big help. Um, but as long as they're fit, these are the 11 who play. We're obviously going to have to make a few tweaks for next year. But I don't think we're going to have to make significant changes, because... I, I think this is a team, this isn't certainly an 11, that could go on and have a really solid season in the National League North as well. Because, after all, this is the 11 that's made it to the FA Trophy final, knocking out numerous National League teams along the way. But just for the sake of let's memorise it and put it on a T-shirt one day, we've got Collings in goal, a back four of Critchlow Noble, Carter, Parry and Davis. Phillips is our defensive midfielder. Benson and Buckley in midfield. Powell leads the line with Cottrell and Stanley supporting. And what support they give, actually, by the way, if we just have a little look at that front three. I know Mick Powell's not scoring as many goals this season as he has done previously, but Powell, 24 goals, 7 assists. Stanley, 15 goals, 10 assists. Cottrell, 12 goals, 14 assists. Let's not ignore the midfield two either. Benson, 12 goals, 6 assists. Buckley, 9 goals, 15 assists. That, as a front five, is ridiculous. We are a very good attacking team and hopefully we can pick up a win against Gainsborough today and secure our spot in, what is it, Tier 6, the National League North, as we start to push on towards the Football League. It's the long-term goal and it's we're getting a little bit closer. Right, let's assertively say, come on lads, the title will be ours if we manage a win. I don't even know if manage is the right word there. We should be winning. Gainsborough, uh, 22 points behind us in the league. It should be a team that we can beat comfortably. I know they're in fifth. They're a playoff chasing team, but it doesn't tell the whole story when we've got that massive points gap. We've only lost two games in the league all season. We should definitely be capable of beating Gainsborough. And it will only be bottling if we don't, because we're definitely better than them. Right, Buckley with the corner, swings it across. Mick Powell has done a Mick Powell. It's his 25th goal of the season, but more significantly, it's his 57th goal for home, which draws him level with Anthony Harris as joint record all-time goal scorer for home. If he can grab another goal in this match, not only will he be almost certainly leading us to back-to-back -back promotions, but he'll also be securing his spot as our all-time record goal scorer which will be awesome. Cottrell now. What's he going to conjure up from the left-hand side? Finds Buckley. Buckley sticks it into the top corner. What did I tell you about these attackers? All five of them have got assists in them. They've got goals in them. They're just, they're rampant and unstoppable as a front five. Cottrell's brilliant there. And he's got so many options. Buckley has three players ahead of him that he could choose. But in the end, sticks... I mean, he hits the keeper and it deflects into the top corner. But in my mind, it always... He just hit it straight into the top corner because he's that good. I mean, and all five of them. Pick it, Name one of those five who's not going to be capable of playing in at least the National League, if not League Two, with the with improvements that you'd expect them to make over the next couple of years. We just need to make sure that we don't get too porous at the back. And these forwards are going are gonna to shoot us up the leagues if we can keep hold of them, because that's going to be the big thing. They're all under contract, at least until the end of next season. But obviously, there are going to be big clubs come a-knocking in the summer after another very good season. 
right, assertive, we're happy, just go out there and win us the league in the second half, lads. That's what we're looking for. Parry, just lump it forward. Doesn't need to. We don't need to see that highlight. We're going to be fine. Right, it's Critchlow Noble with the with the uh, corner. Throw in, back to Phillips, across to Buckley. Buckley tries to outdo his previous goal by shooting from even further out, bending it even more, and this time hits the crossbar. He has no right to be shooting from there, but he is just brimming with confidence. So why shouldn't he? You can shoot from anywhere you want, sir. Right. Gainsborough trying to build a little bit again from the back, but Stanley gets in, makes a tackle, but they do actually win it straight back from him. They're in and they've got a goal back. Let's not let's put our party hats away for a minute. It's 2 1. That's Gainsborough's first proper attack of the game. It's also the first clear cut chance either team have generated in the game, and Gainsborough have scored it. So officially, as per Kev Classic rules, um, we're mugging Gainsborough at the moment, despite the fact we've dominated every other stat. So I'm as we've become more possession based, I'm I am leaning further away from judging a game purely on clear cut chances created. But it would be nice to just grab another goal or two and take some of the pressure off a little bit. Connor Stanley's not been great today. Jake Wright can come on for him. That's an easy substitution to make. Um, and I think we're also going to make a change in midfield. Mark Helm is another one who, if Mark Helm got a run of games, I'm sure he would be a very good player in this team. He's just not quite as good as Buckley or Benson, but he's another one who could probably go and play in the National League. Just like, um, maybe not Jake Wright, but Cameron Archer is another one who could absolutely go and play at a higher level. Um, right, have we got any defensive substitutions? We don't really. Shane Phillips is going to come off. We'll bring on Jack Evans. That's an area we definitely need to strengthen for next year. A backup to Shane Phillips, or dare I say, uh, an upgrade on Shane Phillips and push Shane Phillips down to being the backup to whoever comes in, even though he's our all-time appearance holder. But he's only been a first choice for one season, and that was very close. And it, it would I think that's possibly the weakest area of the team, the defensive midfield position now. So that's an area we're definitely looking to strengthen. But I don't think there's going to be a huge number of signings this summer. I think we've got a very settled team that we've already got tied down to contracts. So it's really going to be a case of picking some youngsters and filling the bench. Because I think our 11, unless we find someone spectacular, our first 11 is is set for next season already. And it will be this one again. Buckley with the corner to Jake Wright and it's just over. There's like two minutes left. Homewood looks packed. I didn't actually see what the attendance is. Only 337. Okay, there's no one on that side. Behind that goal is packed. Uh, Buckley, I don't even know if that's our fans behind that goal. I can't see because... The... No, that's the Gainsborough fans. They're loving it. Um, but I think we've just won the league. We've won the league! Oh, we get we finally make our way up to the... I say finally, it's only taken us three years. We make our way up to Tier 6. If this is where we'd started, we'd have been a playable team out of the box. Um, yeah, let's tell them off for a Jekyll and Hyde performance. But we're going to be in the National League North next season, boys and girls. We get, I'll still show you the Nant Nantwich game, just so you get your normal two, get your normal two matches. Um, and then, obviously, tomorrow's video will be that FA Trophy final, which I'm telling you now, I won't be wearing a suit for. Because I can't find my suit. I will try and find it. Don't know where it is. I think I might have burnt it. Let's go and play whoever we're playing next. But before that, Enoch knew who's just doubled the wage budget. Eight and a half grand a week. To give you some context, when we were with St Albans in non-league to legend, I think our initial wage budget in the National League South was 3.8k. We've got more than double what we've got this season, more than double what we had with St Albans. We got promoted on less than four grand wage budget with St Albans. I don't know where I don't know who's finding this money from, but he is absolutely backing us. Back to back to back, anybody? Right, we're not going to make any changes for the Nantwich game, and I'm not going to mess around too much with the team until after the FA Trophy final. But I think what we're going to do for the final league game of the season against Ashton United is we're going to have a Patreon party. We've got a lot of people who have their Patreon players down in the under-18s, and I think we're going to try and play as many of them as we possibly can in that final game of the season so people can get an idea of how their player is getting on Get, them, get the opportunity to see him play because some of them probably aren't going to make it as players with us long term. Uh, but uh, those that aren't out on loan, I can see there's a few that are out on loan. But those that are still here, we'll get as many of them as we can into the team for the final game of the season. But for now, 
we're going to keep playing the team that's got us to where we've got because there's several of them who are looking for personal records now. Um, obviously, Mick Powell. Let's just get the team talk sorted. Mick Powell just needs a goal to be outright all-time top goal scorer. Um, but there's also season records available uh, for assists. Both um, Stanley and Cottrell are going for that one. Um, there was, I think there's a Man of the Match award. Most Man of the Match in the season, which I think Stanley is able to go for. We got lots of notifications come through in the inbox before this match. There was like three or four different um, personal records that we could go for, plus team records as well. We're already setting record wins in a season, record points in a season. I don't think we've done record goals in a season yet, but we don't want to mix the team up too much while we've still got, well, we've still got awards to win and while we've still got an FA Trophy file on the horizon that we want to be in good form for. Although half an hour on the clock and Nantwich have gone 1-0 up so perhaps perhaps the players have already gone on holiday, even though they're all still in the team. Perhaps they've perhaps they've switched off a little bit. If we don't win this game, I think I will make some, a few changes for the next one, bring some of the fringe players in, like Archer, like Helm, really to send the message that there's no guaranteed places for Wembley. I know this is the eleven that's got us here, and it almost certainly will be the eleven that starts at Wembley, but I want them to earn their place there. I don't want them to just coast into Wembley expecting they're all going to start. I want to give the likes of Archer and Helm and a few others. They're, they're the two obvious ones. Jake Wright, maybe, um, the opportunity to earn a place at Wembley. Buckley's just dragged. Got us back into the game, though. 40 minutes on the clock. 11th goal of the season from central midfield for John Buckley. And Benson's very involved in the setup as well. Plays it out to Critchlow Noble, who is a player that we need to tie down to a contract. There's a couple of players who are on non-contracts at the moment, who we really need to get sorted out with proper big boy contracts as we move into the National League North. Uh, Davis and Critchlow Noble and Carter, I think, are the three. So three of our four starting defenders aren't actually on permanent contracts yet. So we need to sort that out and uh, get that sorted ASAP. Right, we're going to assertively say um, we need to, yeah, we need to just win the game. Um, there's also going to be decisions to make around things like the ground. I think we're probably going to need a new stadium going up to the next league up. Um, how we, how and when we go full time. These are all the things that we're going to be discussing with the board of directors in our little Patreon Twitter group uh, for the board of director level people as well. And there's, there's, we're getting to the point where they're going to have to start making a few decisions. So far, there's not been many decisions to make budgets have been set by Enoch knew who and they've not been changeable and there's not really been much else we can influence but we are as we move up the leagues we're going to be able to start influencing things and I suspect a new ground is in our near future because we can't expand homeward so obviously we're going to need to name the new ground as well so feel free to have some suggestions come in for naming a new ground that's not even been announced yet I imagine we're going to be playing it posh for a couple of years maybe I don't know I don't know what we'll do there's several grounds locally that I guess we could go and play at. But we're not going to meet the criteria for the National League North at Homewood, I don't think, unless the criteria from real life doesn't translate over to the criteria in-game. But I guess we'll we'll have all the fun of finding that out in our season review episode. At, oh, my word, what has Collings just done? That's that's some poor goalkeeping there from Collings. I know we've got him playing as a sweeper keeper, so he is supposed to be rushing out of his area. But what he's not supposed to be doing is nodding the ball down to on-rushing attackers. This is, I mean, that's just poor. Come by all means, come up and do that, but then just head it clear. Don't try and nod it to the feet of your centre backs when they've got attackers on their back. Right, we need to demand more. Where's demand more? There we go. And we need to make some changes. Let's. Let's make those changes we talked about pre-match. So, oh, why oh, everyone's moved around again. Right, we're going to bring Archer on. I haven't even got Helm on the bench today. I'm a monster. Um, we'll bring Lerick Fernandez on, though, um, who is one of the aforementioned Patreon people, I think. So he gets to play a game for us. Um, and who can be our third change? Cottrell's not playing very well. A rare outing for Kieran Sheridan out on that left wing. And he's a bit of a blast from the past. Let's see if he's still got anything about him. Clearly, the uh, the quick pick bench has already. What is going on? Quick pick bench has already decided that it's going to start throwing some reserves at me. So, 
clearly the AI has decided that now we're promoted, we can start rotating a little bit because this is absolutely not my normal bench. These are not. I want Jake Wright. I want Helm. These aren't my normal players. This is going wrong. This is going badly wrong. Right, let's show some passion. We've got to find a way. We can't lose the game. But we're actually going to get thumped, aren't we? They're going to score again at this rate. At least this gives me the opportunity to absolutely tear their lungs out with a post-match team talk and hopefully get some heads screwed back on straight again as we start preparing for the FA, for the FA Trophy final, which I think is only two games away now. So we can't have too many more performances like this because we can't go into that game out of form. So let's be aggressive. That wasn't good enough. There we go. They're motivated. And hopefully they sort their lives out now before that next episode coming up tomorrow night, which is our first trip to Wembley. I think it's our first trip to Wembley, isn't it? Our first trip to Wembley. Let's see how many fans home take to Wembley. That's going to be amazing. We've never even got 636 people into Homewood. Are we going to be the first team in history to not even take a thousand fans to Wembley? We could take everyone who lives in home and not get near a thousand. But that will be tomorrow's episode. It will be Maidenhead in the FA Trophy final and then Ashton United with our Patreon party on the last day of the season. And of course, the season review transfer special thing will follow the day after. If you have enjoyed that, though, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.